Hey e-bike friend, my name is JC with the Rad Wheeling. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you things that you must know before you get an e-bike. This channel is all about e-bikes, you guys, so let's get on with it. So look at the tread on this four inch fat tire e-bike. It is really thick. You would think that that would be somewhat resistant to getting punctures and flat tires. Here's the truth about that guys. You are gonna get flat tires. You are gonna get punctures. When I first got my e-bike, about the third time I was riding, I was riding down the road. All of a sudden, boom, I had a flat tire. I'm like, what the heck? I pulled off to the side of the road. There was a sliver of glass in, stuck in my tire. It was about an eighth of an inch wide and about probably an inch long and it was from an automobile accident it looked like a piece of a mirror or something and I, yeah it was right there in the road so all right so you are going to get flat tires you need to be prepared for that there's several things that you can do all right first thing that i recommend is when you get your e-bike get a product called slime or flat out it's just like a thick liquid that you pump inside of the tube you don't have to take the tube out of the tire you just deflate the tire and you put this in there this is going to help seal up any small punctures if you got like a little puncture from a, a sand spur or a small nail or something like that it's going to fill that puncture so that your tire won't go flat all right, the option number two for tires is you can carry an extra tube with you. You're going to have to bring tools with you. I recommend that you bring tools with you all the time anyway. You never know when you might have some type of a repair that needs to be done on the e-bike. Option number three in here, these are patches to repair, repair a hole. You're not always going to be able to repair a hole because sometimes you won't be able to find it. Which brings us to our next option. You need to have some type of an air pump with you. All right, and I think your final option is installing Tannis armor in your tires. Pretty expensive, but what it is, just a thick foam coating. It's round, it goes inside of the tire. The tube goes inside of the Tannis armor. It just helps to stop sharp objects from penetrating all the way through to the tube. And even if it does puncture the tube, the company says that you're still able to ride the bike with the Tannis armor, even though the tube has gone flat. All right, next thing, guys, you have to have a lock with you, especially if you're going long distances or even short distances if you break down you don't have the tools to repair your e-bike you're gonna have to lock that up one time I had to take an uber all the way back home to get my truck to come back to be able to pick up my e-bike so it's important to keep a lock with you at all times let me tell you something else these things come in a combination right the u-lock is the best because you can lock it around the frame and large objects okay but they come with a combination of cables I like to buy mine separate I buy the lock separate from the cable because I like to get a six foot long cable Cable. The combinations usually are like three foot or four foot cables. Those cables are just not long enough to uh, provide the security that you're going to need whenever you're wrapping things up and helmets and things. Yeah, just trust me, guys. Get a longer cable. Get like a six foot long cable to go with your lock. All right, we need to talk about tools. This little kit right here, this is the one that Hobsco sent me to work on the e bike with there are not enough tools in here you need more than these if you're going to be out riding long distance and you might have a flat tire you need to repair your e-bike or whatever for instance you've got small wrenches here but you need a larger wrench to change the back tire to take the back tire off and change a tube or repair a tube so yeah you need a larger wrench you need a crescent wrench in case there is a nut or a bolt that you don't have a wrench size for right I already said that you need an air pump to pump your tires um there are cables that are zip tied in different areas on the bike you might have to cut a zip tie so bring zip ties with you to replace that but also you have to have some snippers so that you can snip the zip ties you need a short phillips head screwdriver trust me um, i've had to use this a couple of different times this is for taking the tire off so that you can get to the tube and this is your your tube patch kit but yeah guys you got to have a lot of tools with you if you're going to be traveling and especially if you're going to be repairing your own e-bike all right another thing that's important to know is that if you're ordering your bike from online most of the time these bikes will come in and everything will be adjusted sometimes you have to download an app and sync the bike with the app so that you can change some settings but there are Every now and then those cases where you're gonna to have to do some manual adjustments. You're gonna to have to get out some tools and make some adjustments on the e-bike, or you may have to make some digital adjustments on the display, change some of the settings. All these e-bikes have like four, five, six. Some e-bikes have a lot of different settings, and these little manuals that, you know, 
instructions that come from China, they're not always like super duper clear. You have to push this button and then push these two buttons and then push another button and this and that and the other. And unless you are an e-bike enthusiast or professional who has just been dealing with a lot of e-bikes for a very long time, you're not going to understand what you're doing. Um, it's going to be a challenge. I'm just giving you a heads up on that. Don't let it deter you from getting an e-bike though. Like I said, most of them come in and everything is adjusted. All You know, everything works fine, but just know you might have to break out your tools and you might have to break out the manual to change some electronic settings on the display. All right, you've got two different kinds of sensors with your e-bikes. You've got a cadence sensor and you've got a torque sensor. The torque sensor is the one that I really, really like. And the reason I like that is because it matches the, the pressure that you're putting on the pedals. The more pressure you put on the pedals, the more electric power you get. With a cadence sensor, as soon as you start pedaling, you practically get full electric power, so much so that it wants to just almost throw you off of the e-bike on some of these guys that have got 750 watt motors. And that's the other thing, while we're at it, if you can afford to get a 750 watt motor, get a 750 watt motor. The 500 watt motors perform pretty well, but the 750 watt motors perform a lot better uh, like in, in the off-road scenarios on the beach and things like that and I'm, I'm finding that the 500 watt motors can be a little bit sluggish at times. The other thing that I've discovered about e-bikes is that there's a class 2 and a class 3 setting. Class 2 is 20 miles an hour max. Class 3 is 28 miles an hour max. Now class 3 generally is you're pedaling and the electric motor is assisting you. Okay? Of the many e-bikes that I have tried you will literally wear yourself out trying to reach 28 miles an hour and keep that e-bike going 28 miles an hour. That's with your torque sensor. With the cadence sensor, what happens is once you get up to a certain speed, as long as you just, there's no resistance on the pedals, but as long as you just keep turning the pedals, the e-bike will keep accelerating fast. But I have yet to ride an e-bike that reached a 28 mile per hour and, ha and, and kept it at 28 miles per hour um, while I was pedaling with a cadence sensor. A torque sensor, like I said, you're gonna wear yourself out because with a torque sensor, the electric motor matches the pressure that you're putting on the pedals and you'll literally be pedaling with all of your might trying to get up to 28 miles an hour. I may have already mentioned this, I just looked at my notes, but just know that moving forward, as time goes on, you are going to have to make adjustments to your e-bike. Just the other day, I had to adjust the, the uh, cable, the derailleur on my daughter's bike. The cable had stretched and I had to adjust the derailleur because it wasn't switching through all seven gears. And also, I had to replace the brake pads on one of my bikes that I rode 400 miles. Here's another important thing to know. These companies advertise that on one battery charge, if you're pedaling the bike and using the electric pedal assist feature, that you're going to be able to get a certain amount of mileage out of one battery charge. What I have found, guys, is these estimates um, are inaccurate. I mean, they might just be talking about if you get on your bike and you're using pedal assist and you pedal the entire 60 miles, you get 60 miles out of a full battery charge, but nobody does that, okay? Basically, you're just out there using the throttle all the time or you're doing the pedal assist in combination, right? So it's been my experience that when they tell you like you're going to get 60 miles out of one battery charge, I mean, I've literally gotten like 35 miles and my battery went dead. So just be aware of that. And having said that, I mean, why not just get an e-bike where they advertise you can get 60 to 80 miles out of one battery charge, right? Okay, another thing to consider when you're getting an e-bike is do you want a bar going across here or do you want to step through area? I like the step through areas and the reason is is that if you put a basket back here, it's difficult. You can't lift your leg up over because you're going to hit the basket, right? So yeah, I like to get the step through because I've always got something back here. I have a fishing YouTube channel. I put a big milk crate back there and I fill it up with all kinds of stuff. So I have to have the step through area. And besides that, guys, they are just a lot easier to get on and off when you have the step through area on the e-bike. Hey, check out this video right here where I review what I feel is the best e-bike helmet for the money. It's got a lot of features. Thanks for watching this video. Thumbs up or appreciate it. Everybody get outside and get happy. Life is fun. Live it. See ya.